All right, welcome back to CSU Northridge's Organic Chemistry Series. My name is Alex Mantinella, and this is our recrystallization experiment for Chem 333, which is Organic Chemistry 1. So the whole purpose of recrystallization is to essentially purify your product. So today you're going to get an impure sample of acena analyte, and we're going to do a series of filtrations to go ahead and purify that product out. Now there are two main types of filtrations. The first filtration is a hot filtration. And the hot filtration essentially is when your substance is dissolved in your liquid and you're trying to get rid of solid particles. So the first thing you're going to do is a hot filtration. Your stuff should be in solution, so it should be in liquid or aqueous form or you know, solvated. And the stuff that you don't want is going to be a solid. So you'll run it through a filter, get rid of the solid, then you have your uh, material. After that, you're going to do a cold filtration. Now the cold filtration is when your substance is a solid, but it's suspended in a liquid. So it's just kind of floating on top, doing its own thing. So what we're trying to do there is get rid of all the liquid and just leave the salt. So that's the purpose of a cold filtration. And there, and there are times when you use both of them, and you, it's just try to use your best judgment of when you do a hot filtration versus a cold filtration. So why don't we come on and look at what equipment we're going to use today. Okay, so the equipment that we're going to need today. Let's start off with your base and what you're going to kind of build everything around. Uh, and your base is going to be your hot plate and your sand bath. So if you'll notice on your hot plate, you have this uh, tuna can full of sand. And typically that's going to be about halfway or three quarters full. That's, that's about how much sand you want it. The hot plate, uh, you're going to make sure that it is plugged in and that this cord is not touching the white part. So the white part when the heater is on will easily melt this cord, particularly if it gets fairly hot. So we're going to be careful with this. Make sure that this is not touching the, the white part of the hot plate. Now on the front there's two knobs that you can play with. Uh, one of them says stir, there's a magnet on the bottom of this, and it stirs uh, magnetic components. Uh, and the other one is the heat, and the heater function is the one that we're going to be using today. So the, a common mistake when you're first using your hot plate is to turn the stir on and not turn the heat on, and a lot of students will spend 30 minutes and wonder why their hot plate's not getting hot. So just be careful with that. Uh, another thing that you're going to want for this experiment is a thermometer. Now these thermometers we want you to be very careful with. They don't have mercury in them, but you know if you break them, uh, you're gonna, yeah, there's always the chance of broken glass which can cut yourself. Uh, additionally, you need to make sure that these thermometers uh, have a solid blue column of kerosene. So this is kerosene on the inside of this. Now what you want to make sure is that this blue line doesn't have any breaks in it. If you see a break and you see a little bit of kerosene, you know, way up here that's not with the rest of the line, that means the thermometer is no good and you should inform your instructor so they can uh, uh, go ahead and get rid of it. Now along with your thermometer and your hot plate, there's some other things that you might have used before, uh, but you may be a little bit rusty with. Uh, you're going to have some clamp holders. So these things are used to set up your clamps and uh, your clamps you're going to be able to find them in the community drawers uh, and what they do is essentially hold things in place so they don't fall over and break. So you know, you're going to give yourself the clamps to use and hold things into place. So we have a three prong clamp uh, and we also have an extension clamp uh, and we'll go over what each of these are better for uh, in a little bit. There's also some things that you've definitely used before in 101 and 102. You know, you're going to have some Erlenmeyer flasks, uh, pasture pipettes, and the pasture pipette bulbs. Uh, little beakers that you can use for solvent. You're going to have a, a graduated cylinder that you can have uh, to measure things out, you know, uh, rough measurements. You have a big beaker, and you'll notice that this big beaker is full of ice, so we're going to be making ice baths. Uh, we have three different types of funnels. 
uh, we have our uh, short stem glass funnel, our Buchner funnel, and our Hirsch funnel. And again, we'll go over those in a little bit. And of course, we have a filtration flask right here, as well as some filter paper that we're going to use for our funnels. And that's more or less all the equipment you're going to need. Okay, so now that we've gone over the equipment, let's go ahead and show how you're supposed to set everything up. So, you know, for the purpose of this experiment, we're not actually going to run the experiment. I'm just going to show you more or less the steps. So you're going to get your uh, one gram of acetylenolid, then pure stuff. You're going to weigh it out. You're going to put it in here, you know, after you record how much you've weighed out in your lab notebook. And then you're going to go ahead and put it on your hot, your uh, hot plate. And of course, it's going to be in your sand bath. Now, when we put it on our sand bath, we're not, we don't want to just put it just on the surface. If you put it on the surface, uh, you're not going to get a lot of heat transfer. So you're going to go ahead and dig it into the sand a little bit and make sure you get good amount of heat transfer for that Erlenmeyer flask. And you'll notice I have the extension clamp set up there so we don't uh, have any accidents. Now, uh, once it's in there nice and deep, you'll go ahead and close this down and you'll tighten that clamp up. And of course, you can go deeper if, uh, if you want to. And of course, the deeper it is in the sand, the hotter it's going to be able to get. What you'll also notice is that right here, I have our thermometer set up. And the thermometer set up is held by a three-prong clamp because the, the clamp looks like a little hand. It's, you know, holding it down, you know, like a little strong hand. And, and it's able to make sure that it, it doesn't fall over. And you'll see a lot of students actually lean the thermometer up against the bars. And I'd say, you know, a good 30 or 40% of them end up breaking the thermometer like that. So make sure you... Uh, use the clamp and uh, make sure that the thermometer doesn't fall over. The extension clamp is better uh, because it has a, you know, a nice good hook and it'll just be able to hold the Erlenmeyer flask in place. So you'll let it sit there, you'll heat it for a certain amount until as much as your product as you possibly can dissolves, or at least turns into a liquid. Uh, and then from there, you're gonna do a hot filtration. So we'll go ahead and uh, open this clamp up We'll take it off the hot plate, and then we're gonna go over here and do a hot filtration. So the hot filtration, you know, this is gonna be nice and hot. You're gonna use the short stem funnel. So the short stem funnel is either when you're transferring liquids and you don't wanna spill, or if you're doing a hot filtration, and again, you're trying not to spill any liquids as you transfer something over. So you'll set up your short stem funnel, put it over the Erlenmeyer flask that you need, and then you're gonna get a piece of filter paper. And the filter paper, you're gonna fold twice. So you're gonna fold it once in half, and then again, do it twice in half. So you'll get a quarter of a slice of pie right there, or a big Costco size pizza slice. Then you're gonna open it up, and you're gonna make a little cone. So like we, we went from pizza to ice cream. You're gonna go ahead and move this over and put it on the inside of your funnel. And then you're gonna get that a little bit wet so it will actually stick to the side. So whatever solvent you're using, in this case we're just using water for the demonstration, we'll go ahead and make sure it sticks to the side of that. So go ahead and use your water, get it stuck to the side of your, um, your filter. Now, you'll take your product and you'll pour it through. And if it has any solid, the solid should get stuck by the paper, whereas the liquid will pour on through. Now, it's, you have to be a little careful here. When you pour this out, make sure that you don't pour any liquid on the outside of the filter. And what I, what I mean is, if you take a look at this, you'll notice there's always a possibility of getting a little bit of liquid uh, on the sides of it. So you're gonna wanna make sure that your filter is firmly pressed against the edges and there's no chance of any solid leaking in from the sides. So it, it's, you gotta be very careful with how you do that. Now we'll go ahead and put this back. And once you're done with the hot filtration, 
Then you're going to move on to recrystallizing. So if the liquid is hot, you should be able to melt down or dissolve the substance that you want. Uh, you, you won't need the impurities, so we'll just go ahead and set that to the side for now. And then we'll take the liquid and we'll go ahead and put it into an ice bath. Now the ice bath, you'll notice, has both ice and water in it. And the reason why we do that is so we can get good cold transfer and good thermal contact. If you just put ice, there's a lot of air pockets and it's not as efficient as having all ice cold water around it. So again, we want it cooler than cool. We want it to be ice cold. So we'll go ahead and set it down. Uh, if your ice bath is too big, you can go ahead and use an extension clamp and just set it over the top and you can put your flask on the inside of it. And that way you don't have to worry about it spilling when you do this. So I just put my extension clamp over it. I can put, well we'll just adjust this as we need. Put my flask in there, tighten up the extension clamp, and now it's sitting in the ice bath without me having to sit there and hold it over the top. After this, we're going to do our cold filtration. So if you remember, our cold filtration is meant to get rid of any liquid uh, that we don't want and just keep our solid. So we can do our cold filtration with either the Buchner funnel or the Hirsch funnel. The biggest difference between the two of these is just the amount of area. You'll notice that the Hirsch funnel has got a pretty big hole and it has quite a bit of uh, little holes in it that things can filter through. Whereas the uh, the Hirsch funnel is smaller and there is, you know, a lot less surface area. Uh, you, you're going to use them for small amounts of stuff or large amounts of stuff. That's the only difference. Uh, and the reason why is the larger it is, um, the more chance of things flowing through it and losing stuff. Uh, so if you have a smaller one, there's less chance of you losing things, but again, it's only going to hold you know, a small amount in there. So there's a little trade-off between there. So when you set up your cold filtration, and you may have done something similar in your general chemistry course, you'll go ahead and set up your extension clamp again. You will we'll get your filtration flask. Make sure you clamp it up with that extension clamp. That way it doesn't fall over. And then you'll connect it to your backing line. And you'll use uh, one of these tubes. It, it can also be red. And just attach it to your backing line and stick it onto the end of that nozzle. So you're going to go ahead and put that rubber piece over the end of the nozzle. Now I'm going to again uh, re-emphasize why you need to put it with an extension clamp. If I set this aside, and just let it go. Notice how it just falls off if I'm not holding it. You can't, you can't stand it up, it just falls by itself. So you have to make sure it's clamped up or you're gonna lose your product very easily and you'll get a zero on your product rate. So you'll set up the clamp uh, over the filtration flask. Uh, for the sake of the example, I'm just gonna use the Hirsch funnel, but you may wanna use the Buchner depending on how much stuff you have. Go ahead and put it on right there. You're going to get a little piece of filter paper. So for the Hirsch funnel, it's these little circles. For the Buchner one, you might want to use something a little bit bigger. You'll put it over the top, and then you're going to get it wet with whatever solvent you're using. And that way, the paper sticks to the bottom, and you don't have to worry about anything creeping in underneath. You'll go ahead and turn on the vacuum, and notice how it kind of sucks down a little bit. And then you'll take the rest of your material, run it through the, fil the filter. And as the liquid goes through, the solid material that you want should stay on top. If you have residual uh, solid in here, you can get a little bit of your cold solvent, you know, rinse the inside, give it a little whirl, make sure you get whatever you can, and then again, run it through the filter. But you don't want to use too much because the more solvent you use, the uh, more will dissolve. So there's a little balance you have to work with. So just use a little bit, try to get as much as you can 
through the filtration. And then you'll let that suck dry for over the week. Okay, so we hope you learned a lot from this video. You should know all about recrystallizations and filtrations now, uh, and you're going to use them quite a bit over the next two semesters in Organic Chemistry 1 and Organic Chemistry 2. So if you have any questions, please ask your instructor or your lab instructor about the concepts behind this and, of course, you know, uh, how to work with the methods. Uh, you're going to be turning in your product in a little product bag uh, with your report at the end of next week after you have sucked dry your crystals and allow them to sit for a week. And when you let them sit for a week, uh, they'll then be dry enough to take a melting point and then calculate out a percent yield. So uh, we hope to see you next time and uh, have a good day.